الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد uh, another beneficial question was asked and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward the questioners those people who bring beneficial questions and may Allah forgive us of our shortcomings and bless us with more people who are grounded in knowledge who can answer these questions for us and we just try to do the best we can in accordance with our ability in accordance with what we studied in accordance to what we learned from our ulama or what we transmit from our ulama and the question was and may Allah reward the questioner can you please explain the following text and it was a text a long text with regards to the statement of our Sheikh, uh, Sheikhana Imam Abdul Masin Ibn Hamid Al Abad, Hafidhullah Ta'ala, one of the major scholars in Medina, Muhaddith, who is uh, teaching in the Prophet Wasallam's masjid up until now. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless our Sheikh Hameen. And so the question was can you explain the following text? What I had understood is that a teski is not necessarily needed for a student to teach as long as his situation is known and teaches from the books of the ulama. But here they say something else. The person needs to be known. But to whom? To the scholars um, and so on and so forth. So with regards to this issue, as the scholars have mentioned, of course are, are uh, have been important in the history of Islam and have relevance and are beneficial, but they do not uh, necessarily indicate a person's uh, status in ilm and taqwa. However, they are a scholar's a, um, uh, ascription to another individual that they are qualified to teach or whatever the case may be. Uh, so that's one means, and as the questioner mentioned, uh, that a tizki is not necessarily needed for a student to teach as long as the student is known and teaches from the books of the ulama. Uh, so the scholars, because this is still really, uh, you could say, ijtihad as far as making all of these uh, duabit or criterion, but however, as far as being known uh, by the scholars, meaning to be known by a scholar, which is known for the sunnah, uh, known for calling to the book of Allah and the sunnah, the message of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa and according to the madhab of the salaf. And again, these are things which are uh, relative, because that does not mean that a person who has not studied with the ulama should absolutely not teach. But however, what is most important is that people uh, teach in accordance with their ability, that they know their level. So for example, someone who has never studied with scholars and maybe they're a good translator, then they stick to translating uh, and teaching to their extent of those issues they are grounded in. However, those who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has favored to go sit with scholars of Ahl sunnah they also are restricted to the same thing as far as they teach to their level. So one should not be giving fatawa and uh, making ijtihadat and, and things that differ from the ulama without the qualification to do so, meaning without the strength and knowledge and, and ground, being grounded in those various sciences, those Islamic sciences, uh, because of course there's always exceptions, meaning exceptions that there are people who are callers and they call to the extent of their ability, uh, but they haven't went and sat with ulama. They may have a relationship with ulama. They may or may not. They may be in a remote place where they don't have that access, but they still uh, teach in accordance to the book of the in the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi 
wasallam, and in accordance with their ability. And that's probably the most important thing. So it isn't that you can say, oh, they have to have a tezki, or they have to be known to the scholars in Medina, or the scholars in Mecca. Well, what about all the ulama in Pakistan? What about the ulama in India? What about the ulama in Bangladesh? What about the ulama in Mauritania? So you can't necessarily restrict it that Sheikh so-and-so has to give them tiski or ha they have to be known. If we ask Sheikh so-and-so about them, it has to be known from the Yemeni scholars or something like this. No, that's not the case. However, it's important that those people, that people know their levels, that they know their ability and they don't go beyond that. So that is one of the important things to have uh, an idea about, and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah Azza wa Jal. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the Shaitan, wa sallallahu wa sallam, and the Nabi and the Muhammad, wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Balagha anni wa lo ayat, that, uh, you, know, you know, narrate my hadith, or uh, even if it's, uh, you know, even if it's a, an ayat, you know, talk, talk about the deen, even if it's an ayat, so you can give dawah to the extent of your ability. That does not mean, that is not evidence to do what Jamaat Tablik does, having bayan and standing up and having the people, the most ajhal and nas, that are just recruited, they're just, that just go make khuruj, they have a good intention perhaps, but they are on, uh, they are uh, ignorant of the deen and they speak. And how many times have we seen new converts that have been, uh, newly invited, uh, they're they're new new to the religion of Islam, and they're going with the jamaat, and they're asked to speak. It amazes me, and I, I've seen guys who don't who are from America who don't even really know English properly, and are nervous and have no knowledge, and come and get up in front of the the congregation and and give the bayan, my dear respected brothers, blah blah, you know. So that is not a license to speak about the religion without knowledge. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad.